Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the updated version of the North Face Surge Backpack, which is a feature-packed 30-liter all-purpose bag. And in the past, I've had great experiences with some of North Face's other bags, such as the Borealis Backpack and the Caban Backpack, and I'd heard great things about the Surge Backpack, but I'd never really had a chance to use it, and I was very intrigued by some of the upgrades that they made in this version. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about my experience testing this out over the past couple of weeks. I'll talk through how I've loaded it out, and also how it compares to some of the other popular bags in this category. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, it seems like this updated version of the Surge Backpack has taken some inspiration from many of the popular tech bags that are currently on the market. So it seems a little bit more minimal and techy than some of North Face's other bags. It doesn't have bungee cords along the front or a lot of dangling straps. It does still, however, have a very functional feel. There's webbing, there's a lot of pockets and zippers, so it still very much feels like a North Face backpack, not as sleek as something like what you might find from Air or Bellroy, but I think the look provides a nice balance so that you can take this into the office, but it's not gonna look out of place in the outdoors for exploring the city or for using this on campus. The bag is offered in a bunch of different color combinations. The version I have here is the all black, but you can see all the different options that they have on the company site. And then moving into the materials, on the exterior you have a ripstop nylon that feels pretty lightweight, but like it's still gonna hold up well to rougher usage. It also feels like it's gonna offer a nice amount of weather resistance. And then you have YKK zippers all throughout the bag that have worked really smoothly. Continuing along the outside, on the front, as I mentioned earlier, you have webbing that's gonna allow you to attach additional accessories with something like a carabiner. This is normally the spot where I would attach my hero clip, but you have two rows of this webbing, one on each side, so a lot of different ways that you can attach items. And then you have, on the bottom of the bag, compression straps that are gonna allow you to hold something like a yoga mat or maybe a jacket, but that can also be used to compress the bag down when it's a little bit emptier. And one note while we're on the bottom of the bag is because of the size and wider base that this has, it actually manages to stand up pretty well on its own. Also on the outside, you have two great external water bottle pockets. I was really happy to see these included. In this one here, I have the same 20 ounce water bottle that you've seen in a lot of my other daily bag videos fits in there very comfortably. The compartment offers plenty of volume. It also has some elasticity, so if you have something a little bit thicker, it should be able to fit in here okay. And I also like the depth of the compartment, so even for something taller, it doesn't feel like it's accidentally gonna fall out. And then because of that elasticity, it's nice that the compartments hug the bag when they're not in use to maintain a cleaner overall look. And then also on the front of the bag, you have a little loop towards the bottom, which is gonna be a great spot to attach something like a bike light. At the top of the bag, you have a pretty nice top handle. It's got some padding here, so it's gonna be comfortable when you're picking the bag up. It also feels really durable, so even when the bag's a little bit more packed out, it doesn't feel like it's gonna tear or anything like that. On the inside, you can see it's got some cushion, and it's good that it comes up a decent amount to make it easy to grab, but it doesn't stick out awkwardly or anything like that. Moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 31 liters, which is a really interesting size in my opinion. It's a little bit bigger than one I would normally like to use for my day-to-day. -day. This is more of a minimal travel bag size for me, but it gives you more than enough space for everything that you might need to carry with you on your day-to-day -day basis with some leftover space for tossing in a pair of gym clothes or a jacket or something like that. And I like that even though this is a larger bag, when it's a little bit more packed out, it doesn't stick out too much, which makes it nice for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit and carrying on to most domestic and international airlines. Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. These straps have a decent amount of padding, but it actually felt a little bit thinner than I was expecting. It's also kind of stiff. It just doesn't feel as comfortable as the padding that we saw on the Borealis backpack, which is one of the best harness systems that I've tested out. That one was a lot softer, it was thicker. It also had a meshy material on the inside to help prevent moisture from building up. So I do wish that these had been just a little bit more robust, especially given the larger size of the bag. When it's more packed out and you're wearing it for a longer period of time, you can start to feel that weight a little bit. These straps do have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders. And then on 
the straps, you also have some additional loops where you can attach accessories. These have some reflective coating as well for when you're riding your bike. And then you have an adjustable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. The sternum strap also has a little safety whistle on the clip, which is a nice addition. And then moving down towards the bottom of the bag, you have a removable waist belt, which I always like to see. It's great that you can fully remove this, that you don't have to tuck it away anywhere, because I don't really like using these sort of waist straps too much. As you can see, it's a pretty thin strap. It doesn't have much padding. I don't feel like it offers much support. This is really helpful for maybe just stabilizing the bag when you're walking around or riding your bike. But generally, I will just remove these when, when I'm wearing the bag, as I don't like to use them, but it's good that they were included in case you like having that additional bit of help. Moving into the back paneling, I like the implementation here. This padding is more comfortable than what we saw on the straps. It's just really soft and thick, so this has felt great, even when the bag has been a little bit heavier. And I like the distribution of the padding. You have a lot of padding at the top and at the bottom, so even in this lower back area, you have plenty of support. And then I like that the padding has plenty of elevation and air channels to provide you with airflow and ventilation while you're walking around for a longer period of time throughout the day. Jumping into the organizational options, this is an area where the bag really excels. I was impressed with the variety of pockets that are offered all throughout the bag. Starting off on the front, you have two quick access zippered compartments that actually have a decent amount of space. Starting off with this one on the right, this opens up wide so that you can easily grab and see everything that's in the compartment. And I really like the amount of volume that's offered here, which gives you a lot of flexibility with it. You can store, it can hold bulkier items, which is always nice. And so what I currently have here is my GoRuck Wire.mini, which has just some of these smaller items that I didn't want floating around. I tossed in my Blue Part portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank, and then I also stored my Ray-Ban sunglasses with their case in here. And then on the other side, you have a similar style zipper opening, but this compartment is different in that it has a lot of internal organization for all of those smaller items that you still want to be able to reach easily during the day. So jumping in, first up you have a few mesh slip pockets, which is always nice so you can see what's in the compartment. These offer a nice amount of space, not a whole lot of elasticity, which would have been nice to see to just kind of hold everything down a little bit more. In this pocket, I just tossed in a little dongle for my phone. Next to that, you have a similar style compartment where I just put a little flashlight. And then behind those, you have some larger slip pockets that are gonna be great for taller and slightly bulkier accessories. Again, there's not a lot of elasticity here, so there is a fixed volume volume and the items may slide if you place your bag down you can kind of see this starting to slide out in this compartment on the left I just placed a little manicure set that I like to have with me when I'm on the go and then on the right I placed this uh, USB power block that I use for charging my MacBook Pro and my other devices when I'm on the road Moving up along the front of the bag you have another spacious compartment I like that the zipper on this one is almost hidden on the front of the bag and so opening this up you get plenty of volume here for anything that's a little bit more delicate that you want to store the inside of this compartment has fleece lining on all sides to help prevent against scratching so if you have sunglasses that you want to place without a case or you know some delicate electronics it's nice to have that extra bit of protection and there's just so much volume offered here this may be a good spot to store some headphones if you have headphones that fold up they might be able to fit in here I really couldn't even figure out what to fill up all this space with just because there's so many areas throughout the bag. What I currently have in here is my Apple Magic Mouse, and then I tossed in the remote for my drone, and then down near the bottom I have my GoPro camera, and then I also tossed in a lightning cable and power brick to charge my tablet and my phone. And even with those items in there, there was still plenty of leftover space and I wanted to toss in something else, maybe my phone while going through TSA. And again, when this compartment is emptier, it should be able to hold a larger pair of over-ear headphones pretty comfortably. Next up, we have an admin style compartment that has some nice internal organization. Again, a nice wide opening so you can easily see what's on the inside, a decent amount of space here. This compartment doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, it stops right about the middle of the bag, but still offers more than enough capacity. This might be a good spot for like a dot kit or a jacket if you're traveling, you can easily grab it. And then at the, you, you know, here you could probably place a pouch if you don't want to use all the slip pockets. In my case, I just tossed in my Matador pocket blanket, which fit in there nicely. And then beyond that, you have just more slip pockets here for keeping your stuff, you know, from getting all chaotic in this area. So on the left side here, we have a meshy compartment. Again, no elasticity in any of these compartments, which I really would have liked to see. That's something that Air does very well with these types of compartments. They have kind of the elastic band, which helps secure the items in addition to expanding 
And so in this last one, I just put a little tin with some band-aids and ointment. And then on the right side, you have a similarly sized compartment where I just placed a deck of cards. Behind that, you have a few small slots to hold something like a pen. What I have here is the Fisher Space Pen. And then a little bit of a larger slip pocket. I didn't have anything to place in here. This might've been a good spot for my Apple Magic Mouse or portable battery bank or something like that. And then next to that, you have a fleece line compartment that might be a great spot for a phone. I like how much space this offers. So even for something like an iPhone 12 Pro Max should be able to fit in here. My iPhone 11 Pro, fit comfortably and I like that because it has that fleece lining it's gonna be protected against scratching. Behind that you have a zippered pocket that's gonna be great for those smaller items that you don't want floating around or getting lost. Plenty of space in this compartment. The only things that I tossed in here were my Air card holder just to kind of showcase how I might store a wallet. And then I also have my KeySmart Pro. And then the last thing I wanna call out in this compartment is that you do have a little lanyard with a plastic clip which may be a good spot to store something like your keys or a multi-tool. And then all the way on the back, you have one larger slip pocket that has a pretty soft lining. It's not the same fleece that we saw on this compartment here. So it's not quite as soft as that, but it's still not you know, any sort of a nylon. It feels great. And this may be a good spot to play something like your tablet if you wanna grab it you know, while you're traveling. In my case, I just tossed in my Kindle e-reader, which fit in there very comfortably. The next area that we're gonna be taking a look at is what I would call the main storage area. And this is a top loading bag, so the zipper doesn't go down that much, but it does go enough to allow you to easily see everything that's in the compartment. I also wanna call out the zipper pulls that are on this compartment and the laptop compartment. I love how easy they are to grip. Kinda of would've liked to have seen these included in other areas of the bag. Uh, and so jumping into the main compartment, again at 31 liters of capacity, there's more than enough space for your EDC. And you know, with the items that I currently have in here, you can see there's some leftover capacity. I could have tossed in a jacket or maybe a lunch or something like that. And so diving into what I currently have here, first up, I just have a few pouches. I have my Tombin handy little thing pouch, which has, has some of the EDC items that I like to have with me. Next to that, I have the Air Slim Kit, which has mostly some of the tech accessories, hard drive, other items that I might need while I'm working remotely. And I tossed in these extra pouches just because I had leftover space. There's just so much volume with the 31 liters and all of the other pockets provided throughout that I really wanted to show how much I could actually pack in here. And I like that the compartment is able to handle bulkier items pretty well. So down towards the bottom, I place my Beat Studio wireless headphones case, which is one of the bulkier items that I might carry with me. And then I also tossed in my DJI Mavic Mini with its hard shell case. Next to that, I have a full-size moleskin notebook. And then the last item that I currently have in here is my Levitate portable standing desk. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. So no other organization offered here, just a big bucket of space. And I really like the bright lining to make it easy to see down towards the bottom when the bag is a little bit fuller. And I like that because this comes up and is able to handle those bulkier items, this would work pretty well for minimal travel. I could definitely toss in my larger double-sided and compressible packing cube, a dop kit, maybe an extra pair of shoes, and I'd be good to go for a longer weekend trip. And then the last area that we're gonna be taking a look at is the laptop compartment. And so this is another top loading compartment, doesn't open up fully flat. And I really like the implementation here. You have these gussets that prevent the compartment from opening too far out, but it opens up enough to be able to, you know, easily reach down and grab any devices that you might have. And there's an impressive amount of space in this area, almost too much if you don't carry a thicker laptop or multiple devices on your day to day. So you have one large slot here that could also work for maybe holding some folders or a notebook. And then you have this middle sleeve that's gonna be a good spot to store a tablet. Plenty of space here for a 10 or 11 inch tablet. Currently what I have is my iPad mini, which fit in there very comfortably. This sleeve is well padded on both sides. It shares the padding from what I would call the main laptop sleeve. So I really like that it has a dedicated area for your laptop that actually provides a decent amount of protection. And then on the back, you have the laptop sleeve, which is meant to hold 15 or 16 inch laptop, maybe even a 17 inch. I mean, there's plenty of space here. You can see my 13 inch MacBook Pro is getting kind of swallowed up by the compartment, but the sleeve is very well padded. I love that it has the soft fleece lining to help prevent against scratching. It's a suspended compartment, so if you place your bag down a little bit harder, your device is gonna be well protected. And so pulling my laptop out, 
Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. And so plenty of padding on both sides of the compartment and it comes up enough to be able to hold a thicker device if that's what you're normally carrying with you. So just really love the implementation here. It definitely feels like my laptop is gonna be well protected while I'm running around throughout the day. And I just really love the overall layout and the amount of organization offered all throughout the bag. Everything is very well thought out. And if you're looking for a durable and versatile bag that's gonna offer plenty of space and organization, then this is gonna be a great option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the North Face Surge backpack over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase this on Amazon for about $130. I've seen the price jump around a little bit depending on the color that you pick, but $130 is what I paid for the bag. And to me, this feels like a pretty reasonable price considering the features and build quality that this has to offer. And it also compares well to other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag that this made me think of was of course the North Face Borealis, which is a very similar bag. In my opinion, it has a great organizational layout, solid build quality. That bag to me actually has a much more comfortable harness system. And it's, you know, it's just a bag that's gonna work well in all sorts of environments. It has a very outdoorsy look. It has bungee cord on the front. Not quite as many pockets as this, but if you like the North Face's aesthetic and you're looking for a durable bag that's gonna be slightly smaller than this one, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to check out. Another bag this made me think of is the Osprey Metron, which is a really solid 26 liter bag. It has a very comfortable harness system. Osprey always has a solid build quality on their bags. I really like the organizational layout on that bag. It opens up clamshell style. It has a separate shoe compartment, so it's gonna be great. If you're somebody who likes to cycle to work or you need to carry a pair of gym clothes, it's gonna be a little more compact than this at that 26 liter size. And I also like how you can compress that bag down pretty nicely when you're not using it. It has a well-protected laptop sleeve. And so if you're looking for a bag that has this sort of a vibe, but that's gonna offer some extra features for cycling or for storing some of your gym clothes, and that's gonna be a great option to keep in mind. Another bag this made me think of is the Timbuktu Authority Pack, which we've looked at a few times on the channel, and that is a really solid tech and everyday bag. It's gonna have a little bit more of a professional aesthetic than this, but it has an excellent organizational layout, lots of pockets for all the things that you need to carry with you, a well-protected laptop sleeve, and a very comfortable harness system. To me, it's a little bit more comfortable than this bag. It's gonna be able to hold plenty of stuff. It comes in at 28 liters, so not quite as big as this, it also has just a slimmer silhouette overall, which is what makes it great for taking into a more professional setting. So if you're looking for something durable in this price range, it's gonna have a more professional vibe and that's gonna be a fantastic option to take a look at. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Evergood CHZ26, which is a really fantastic minimal bag that comes in at 26 liters. So on paper, it's smaller than this bag, but because of the very simple layout that that has, it feels like it can hold as much, if not more than this bag, while still just keeping a really sleek silhouette. The bag has an incredibly simple organizational layout. It just has a few pockets and just a big bucket of space for you to toss all of your stuff into. Excellent external water bottle pockets, a suspended and well-protected laptop sleeve, solid build quality. That one's also gonna be good for taking into the outdoors. You can throw a hydration bladder in there. So if you're interested in a bag such as this, it can kind of go into any environments and go into the outdoors nicely, but that's gonna have a more minimal aesthetic and organizational layout, and that's gonna be one of the best options that you can check out. With that being said, the North Face Surge backpack holds up really well against all those bags. And if you're looking for a versatile and spacious bag that's gonna to offer tons of organizational options and that you can take into any environment, and this is gonna be a great option to keep in mind. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think of the Surge backpack and how it compares to some of the other versatile all-purpose bags that we featured on the channel in the past. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank you as always for watching and supporting the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.